Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday night webinar. So this is going to be a pretty interesting webinar tonight. So on tonight, we're going to be talking about research fees, so to charge or not to charge. And we have our special guest here, Ms. Sade Howard. How are you, Ms. Sade? Hi, everyone. So Ms. Sade is a travel business owner as well. And thank you so much for coming on our web um, webinar tonight. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, this is my first uh, webinar I'm outside of my group in a long time. Been busy, so I'm excited to share the wealth of knowledge. I love it. I love it. So, I mean, let's, it's, it's 807. Let's jump in. Let's talk about research fees. So, to charge or not to charge, like, do you charge research fees? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've always been a believer in charging a fee. Um, of course, when I first started out as an agent, I didn't charge a fee just because one, I didn't know the agents were charging fees. <laughs> and two, I didn't know how to justify the fee. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of started doing my own research and planning and figuring out like, well, what do I need to charge a seat for that I got a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm. in doing it. So what um, I normally like to tell people is if you're charging a fee or if, I'm sorry, if you're not charging a fee, the first step is to think about the reality of it all. No the one time. works for free. Yep. You go to Starbucks, the person handling you your $8 coffee they're working for an hourly wage. Yep. You go to McDonald's, you go to Taco Bell, you go to Ruby Tuesdays. Everyone is being paid an hourly wage. You go to the mechanic, you go to the doctor's office, you go to the school, somebody there is being paid an hourly wage. So if you are entering or you are already establishing your travel business, how are you having a business, but you're not treating it like a business? Yep. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> you hit it right on. So, I mean, that kind of sort of covers why to charge a fee. Um, some, I know some, some agents, not even just my agents, some agents may charge a fee, some may, may not. And it be, it may be just like what you say, you know, maybe they're not confident enough to, to charge the fees. And I mean, that kind of sort of goes into agent markup as well, you know? If there's not enough commission there and you have, you know, a lower price than everybody else, kind of sort of charging, you know, agent markup. So I guess that we can kind of do both of them in one, you know, are you, are, are you okay to talk about agent markup or you just want to keep it on? No, let's talk about agent markup because I, I believe in that too. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, some agents won't do it. Some of them are not confident enough, but if we are, I try to think about, um, tell all agents, we are wholesalers of travel. So we have the same hotels, the same inventory as just about any supplier out there, except our price may be a little bit lower. Sometimes, so, yeah. you know, that, that goes into why you should, probably should charge a research fee because you're going to be offering lower prices for one. And so I'll tell my story. When I first began, I didn't charge research fees and I got tired of wasting my time. And so then I started charging research fees and then, you know, people that, you know, they will still do the same thing, you know, so I would just, you know, be collecting money and sometimes the people will not, you know, will not respond. So I'm like, okay, whatever. And so now I do this thing where I do a Zoom travel inquiry. If I have a client that wants to go somewhere, I'll jump on a Zoom and I'll do a whole travel inquiry on Zoom. So the client's there, I'm there, I know exactly what hotel they want and I send the invoice. And I have a, um, a pretty high rate of, um, you know, them paying their invoices. and so you know, for each and everybody, you know, it's different, but I truly believe that, you know, eventually I'm going to go back to um, a fee-based schedule, you know, me charging a research fee for my time, because even me sitting there on Zoom with them, that's, putting things that's together, that's still my, exactly, it's still an that's hour, an it's hour. still my time, so I'm not opposed to research fees. Listen, I think the agents should charge them as well, but I do think that the fees should be justified, um, what do you, what do you, do you recommend research fees for your brand new agents coming in? Yes, I do. Because okay. at the end of the day, it, it all boils down to their time. Granted, yes. you may not be able to charge for expertise just yet because you're yes. still kind of, you know, learning the ropes, 
But at the end of the day, you are providing a service. Amen. A service fee. So normally what I do um, for the newer agents, I say, hey, the bare minimum of your service fee needs to be $50. Yeah. When we look yeah. at it, um, newer agents, on average, you're going to take a little longer to kind of cultivate what that itinerary may be or what hotel and what rental car is. So you're going to probably spend anywhere between four to five hours really figuring out like, hey, how do I get, log into this vendor? Um, how does this vendor tell me what my commission is? Or when I'm looking at this destination versus that destination, it's easy for newer agents to spend on average three to five hours on one simple quote. So think about it this way. You charge a $50 fee, you've charged 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. In some states, that's a little bit more than the seven fifty dollars um, an hour for minimum wage. And then in other states, that's still under the minimum wage. So $10, I feel, is a, a very good sweet spot to start off as a new agent. Um, and then as time goes on and you really hone into a niche or something that you feel is your specialty, like maybe you're all about cruises, right? You know the deck plans, you know what are the best room types, you know when's the best time to eat or the best time to travel on one cruise line versus another. That's expertise. That means you have been training throughout some time to gain that knowledge. A doctor goes to medical school. They are training <laughs> to get that knowledge. I don't just show up today at Starbucks and start making coffee. That's a whole elaborate, you know, espresso machine. I got to get some training. Every, I'm just saying every business has a manual. They have a training process. And guess what? There is such thing as what? Paid training. Yeah. So get paid while you're training. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. So at what point, um, do you start separating your different research fees? You know, I know some some agencies and some agents, you know, for um, an inquiry, they have this, or for um, a wedding, it's this. Like, do you separate your research fees into different, I, different categories? I personally don't, because at the end of the day, I am not going to argue about prices. Right. It's not my personal goal to be, let's say, the cheapest agent mm -hmm. or the most expensive agent. I am essentially selling you my service. So my rate is my rate. Um, I charge a flat research fee, whether it's just, you know, a couple going on a trip, a family of four, or a group that's going. The fee is the fee. Now, if you have a larger group, let's say, you know, 50 plus people, or you're in the hundreds, you can tag on like a per person fee. If you don't feel super comfortable, start off with the $10. If you feel really comfortable, then hit $50 per person. Like you got to figure out where you're comfortable at that in terms of um, adding on that per person fee. But definitely if you're doing a large group, someone that charges $100 or $150 or even $200. In yes, I've seen them. Yes. That two hundred to me, $200 to plan a group trip for a hundred people. Oh yeah, that's enough. worth it. Yeah. 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 I don't think it's enough. I don't think $200 is enough. So if you're talking to the group leader, you charge that group leader 200 bucks, a hundred bucks to do the research, right? You're planning out itinerary. You're suggesting um, excursions. You're doing all these great things. Then the next step is to figure out where are they going? You know, what is the per person cost? Do you have a cost for that? Because now you got hundred people or 50 rooms, they're going to have questions. They're going to call, they're going to text, they're going to email. And every time you work on something, you have to be paid for that. That is an, a chargeable action. So if you say, okay, I've got this group, it's 50 rooms, it's hundred guests. On average, I get five emails per room, you know, on a group trip. So charge $50 per person. That means for every room, every time you got five questions or five emails or five phone calls, you're charging 20 bucks for 20 minutes of your time. Yep. Yep. And you know, if, if the clients don't want to pay it, then that means that they're just not your client. Plain and simple. Right. Everybody, right. I try to explain to my agents, it, 
everybody is not your client. You're going to have to turn some people away and, you know, be okay with that. That's not money that you've lost. You know, maybe that's the client that's going to, you know, give be you the nasty. Most yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, all money is definitely not good money. Um, mm -hmm. And when you are charging fees, people will eliminate themselves. People who are here window shopping, um, they're here to waste your time because they've asked five other travel agents for quotes and they want to see who's going to be the cheapest. And you're out here spending that, you know, one to five hours cultivating this trip just to find out that they got five other agents, but you didn't charge a fee. Right. You didn't charge a fee. So yeah. sometimes you got to let people eliminate themselves. It's the same thing as a sales process. You have a, a sales funnel on your website. Mm -hmm. The sales funnel is wide at the top, right? That means anybody and everybody can come through. But as you do those touch points, as you call, as you email, as you make appointments, as you send reminders, the, the funnel gets smaller and smaller because the people that want to be there will be there. Those who are wasting your time, they're gonna circle around the top and pop out. They're gonna be gone. You are right. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Yep, you're right. At what point do you recommend, um, at what point in the pipeline? Well, not the pipeline, at what point in the process do you recommend agents start charging for the fee? Um, do you recommend doing a, um, a discovery call? Do you charge for a discovery call or how do you do your, your fee? Um, for me, I don't charge for a discovery call because really a discovery call is not really for them to interview me. It's me interviewing them. Mm -hmm. I need to know what their expectations are. So once I kind of know what their expectations are, then that's when I present what my expectations are. I get plenty of clients that will send me text messages, send me emails and be like, hey, you helped us on this trip before in the past, or we were in this group with you. Can you send me a quote? And I'd be like, great, I love to work with you. You know, grab a time on my calendar, or I have a research fee, but I would love to work with you. This is the link to my fee. If you're serious, then I know that you're going to pay the fee. So then we'll set up an appointment. But if they're not looking to pay the fee and they're just wanting you to do the legwork, they disappear and that's fine. Because while they're eliminating themselves, it frees me up to do two things. One, continue to have strong, positive customer service with my current clients and those who value me. And B, it allows me to scale my business. Maybe as a newer agent, you don't have a lot of clients. So what is the one thing that you need to do when you don't have clients? You got to market. Yep. So I preach it. Preach it. It's only not to waste the market. You don't even have to be on Facebook to market. I tell everybody this, this story of Miss Jackie. So um, on our last Dubai fam trip, we were um, in Dubai and we had like a travel agent uh, get together um, kind of sort of thing. And so um, Miss Jackie, she has 75 people that were um, that were initially going to come to this Dubai trip. Well, only 50 wound up coming, but the kicker was Miss Jackie didn't even have social media. And so that's marketing. Like she was an old head. Like, you know, she was word of mouth. You know, I don't know that she did flyers at the library, but she didn't <laughs> even have social media. So there are so many different ways to market yourself. And I try to tell my agents, listen, I don't even want to hear excuses. Well, like <laughs> the thing. If you're a newer agent and you may not know marketing, maybe marketing isn't your thing. True, true. But if you say yes to everyone that says, hey, can you get me a quote? Hey, can you get me a quote? You have now taken time away from your marketing or your ability to learn about marketing yep. because you're rushing to do these quotes that you're not getting paid for just for more than half of them to say, oh, well, thanks, but I don't want to book. Or maybe they just ghost you all together and they don't even reply back. True, so true. when you put a price tag on it, you're able to organize yourself better. That's, that's really the, the secret sauce, you know, is organization. So yeah. if I'm able to charge a fee, which leads to kind of swindling down my lead funnel, I can organize my day. I can say, hey, 
I saw, you know, this on YouTube. I want to give this a try. Or I saw this in a, a travel agent group and I want to give that a try. Or maybe I want to make my own videos or how do I make a reel? You have no time to make a YouTube video, no time to make a reel, no time to make a flyer, no time for yourself or your family if you're out here running around with everybody that you said yes to. And they're not, not everybody that says, hey, can you do this for me? Books. They just don't. I wish they would. <laughs> I wish they would. My, my checking account would really like it if everybody books. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay so um doing the discovery call okay so do you have them fill out a travel inquiry first and then do the discovery call and then let them know that you charge a research fee to to put everything together or do you do the yes. discovery call fill in the travel inquiry form and then you know doing the discovery call tell them about it so in my experience again i find out that having these inquiry forms are great. However, you don't want to overwhelm someone. The main reason why a person offline or following you on Instagram or Facebook is coming to you is because they feel that A, you have the knowledge, B, you have the rates, and C, you have the customer service, right? If I wanted to sit here and answer 20 questions about where I want to go, I can go to Expedia. Yep. So I do not believe that you should have a very extensive questionnaire. Five questions, no more than 10, including your name, your phone number, your email, and your date of birth. That's four questions right there. So you have seven questions left to ask <laughs> your budget. Where do you want to go? How many people? Yeah, do you want yeah, luxury? Yeah, the basics. Don't You don't have to say too many questions about like, oh, well, did you ever experience, you know, a Four Seasons Resort? Oh, no, 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 that's don't, too much. Don't do that. <laughs> Save that for the call. Yes. One of the things that you cannot get from your questionnaire is personality. Yep. They need to hear, feel, and experience your personality because it's a part of your customer service. On top of that, you need to be able to hear what they're saying versus what they wrote down. Sometimes people are first-time travelers. You have no idea if they're a first-time traveler from that questionnaire. So if you say, hey, what, what is your expected budget for this? And they say, hey, I think I can go to Jamaica for eight days for $600 per person. They, they may not know, you know, that maybe the flight alone is $600. Mm -hmm. So when you get on that discovery call, then that's when you get to do the, your second best asset, which is educate. It is your job to market, which is about informing, but then educate. And once you educate, you set expectations, both for yourself and for your client. What can they expect from you? What should I be expecting in return? So I tell people by email and I tell them in my discovery calls, when you pay my fee, you will get X, Y, Z in terms of service. This is what you can expect from me. My fee has an expiration date. Just because you pay my fee one time doesn't mean I'm going to spend three months with you. Okay. I'm, I'm not. Try. <laughs> yes. You're, you get two weeks. Two weeks of my time for research. If you switch the destination, you switch the dates, you switch from a, a trip of 100 to a trip of four people, you can do all that that you want in two weeks. After that, and you don't book, here's my invoice. Here's another one. <laughs> here's my invoice. Because we're running a business. Yep. You're running a business. The, that 100 $150 fee, $200, even a $300 fee, depending on your business model, it's gone in two weeks. Yep. You done paid your CRM, you done paid your host agency fee, maybe you brought some type of media kit that you saw, someone said, hey, I got social media, you know, examples or something for you. Maybe you got Travify, you done paid them to, that little $300 is gone, and then you got gas at $6 a gallon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Saying your little fee is gone, okay? So two weeks. 
two weeks. So, okay. So during your proposal process, uh, you, you know, how many proposals do you send them? One or two? I actually um, say that I send three at a time. Okay. Three. Now, when I say three at a time, if you're just going somewhere basic like Jamaica, um, Mexico, or DR, I'm going to give you two to three resorts with flight options if you want the flight options. Now, if you're looking for something that's more extensive, like you want to do eight days in Bali, nine days in Dubai, that is more extensive than just looking up the Caribbean. So you'll get one. You'll get one set of a daily itinerary. And if I choose, you know, camel back riding and you don't want to do camels, you just want to do the ATVs, then that adjustment is covered in your, your quote. But we already know your dates are set, right? So it just depends on the type of travel that you're selling. If you're selling something basic, sending someone in Vegas, sending them to Jamaica, give them two to three options. If those options they don't love, okay, send two more the second time. You don't want to give someone too many. Yes, all at once because a confused mind does not spend a dime. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> So you send them the proposals, follow up 24 hours. How long do you wait to follow up with them? Well, I actually have my stuff automated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, generally in my system, I send you your quote. Um, actually, after we get off the phone call, I'm sending you my invoice. That's number one. Um, with my invoice, you're also going to get a welcome email that kind of tells you about me, like my personal background. What am I doing with the money you give me? Guess what? I'm a local business owner. I've been in the travel business for X amount of years. I've got X kids. They're in ballerina classes. They're in karate. They're in little league. You know, we spend our time with our family when we go to Nova Scotia, when we go to Jamaica, like I'm, this is how you build rapport. Yeah. So yeah. They get that email and I tell them that they can expect their, if it's a, you know, Caribbean, um, they can expect their quote within 24 hours. Or sometimes I might say 48 hours, depending if you're part-time, give yourself two days. If you're a full-time. On the weekends too? Huh? Or just business days? Business days. Okay. Business. Yep. Two to uh, one to two business days. I usually, for me, I'm a full-time agent, so I can get that out for Caribbean in, you know, a day. Um, but if you're a part-time agent, you have life going on, right? So give yourself some grace. Give them, say, hey, turnaround times, you know, 48 hours. Get that out to them. If it's something more extensive like Paris or Bali, let them know that you, you have a week or you have five days, however long you think it takes you um, based off of the vendor that you use. We have vendor relationships. So you know how long your vendor is going to take to get back to you. Um, just adjust that accordingly. After that email goes out, that means, remember, you're setting the expectation. You're mm -hmm. telling them on that discovery call that it's going to take yep. 24 hours or a week. You're reiterating that in your email. But in between that time, especially if it's something long, like a, a Bali trip or something, drop another email in there. Hey, you know, come and join my Facebook group. This is a community of fellow travel lovers. We have a good time over here. This is part of that marketing. But if you're not charging a fee and you're saying yes to everyone, how can you market? You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. I love this. I love this. Okay, so client gets the invoice. How long does it take for your CRM system to... to or your CRM system, or you to mm -hmm. um, to check up on your clients to ask questions. I give them two days. Okay. Within two days, I'm sending a reminder to say, "Hey, Jane, you know it was great speaking with you the other day. I sent over your quote with X amount of options, or you can say for X destination. I'd love to get your feedback and see, you know, what we can do to get you on that next vacation of your dreams." All right. Let's say that. No response. Do you message them again? Yes, I do. <laughs> How many times do you message them before you just like, okay? Three. Okay, I give that's them fair. Three, yep, three touch points. I will spread it out. Um, and that's if you're just doing email. 
Uh, my system is doing email, text message, and a warm call transfer. So you will get a text message from me first to say, hey, Jane, you know, I just sent over your quote or, hey, Jane, you know, just touching bases with you to see if you had any questions about the quote I sent over the other day. Um, it'll wait a few minutes. It'll actually call my client. And if my client answers, the, the system will call me and say, hey, Jane's on the other line. Press one to connect, right? So now I got Jane on the phone. That's where you keep selling yourself because you're selling your customer service. But if I don't get in touch with Jane, she gets another text message. Hey, Jane, I'm sorry we, we keep missing each other. I just want to follow up with you. But if you have any questions, I'm always here. I love this. This is good. This is really, really good. <laughs> so how, what's the longest you've ever had to wait for a customer a customer to book? And then, you know, any inside of a proposal, you do put an expiration date, correct? Because people um, will try. Well, no, I, I don't. I don't have to put an expiration date because I set that expectation during our discovery call. Well, how do, I, what about the flights? You know, the flights, they are um, fluctuating up and down. How did, what, what about the flights? If the flights and stuff are included, you of course put it on hold, but. Nope. So every quote that I send along with every email that I send at the very bottom, I put that rates and availability are subject to change. Yes. Until yes, deposit yes. is applied. Absolutely. That's good. The that's best on, verbiage. That's on all the emails. I, it's it's there. It's plain as day. It's not tiny. It's not you know super separated from everything else. I'm not hiding it. Yeah. I'm telling you over the phone. I'm telling you in my emails. I'm telling you in your quote that you open up. These are the terms and conditions. Unless you have a paid deposit, this is not set in stone. I right now I'm I'm personally experiencing this. I have a client who contacted me almost a year ago about, oh <laughs> about doing Dubai for her birthday. She has paid my fee three times, okay? Three times. And she still hasn't <laughs> booked. But she keeps saying, I'm waiting for everybody else. I'm waiting for everybody else. And I'm like, okay. Price is going to go up. Yeah. The hotel that she wants in Dubai went up to where it's going to be $5,000 per person, just for the mm -hmm. hotel, just for the hotel. Well, when you wait, that's exactly what that's happens. It. Right. <laughs> so um, it's okay to, my thing is, if people want to do business with you, they're going to do business with you. Of course, you should stay positive, stay in front of the customer with touch points like, hey, you know, just reaching out. Hey, how's it going? Um, and if they don't book, like you don't have to harass them. No. Just know, yeah, just know that, you know, I'm saying it's like the newer agents. Don't, yeah. You don't have to harass people. Put them off to the side and just know like maybe in two months or something, hey, just reaching out to see if you have any travel plans coming up. I'd love to talk with you again, you know, and see how we can get you on your dream vacation. Leave it at that. I love that. I love that. And you're messaging clients on their birthdays, randomly, all of that good stuff. All of that good stuff. So I do a campaign throughout the year where I have all of like the major destinations, you know, DR, Jamaica, London, Paris, um, Thailand, Bali, Mexico, and something else. So every time someone goes there, I put their name on the list and I put a little date beside it. And every month at the beginning of the month, I see my list, those 10 people, those 30 people, those that group of a hundred people, I'm sending them an email with a pretty picture that I found in Canva, right? <laughs> of the destination. I, <laughs> I, meet them, I just love it. But I send them a, a message that says, look where you were last year. Look where you were last year. Smart. Where smart. where to next? Mm -hmm. You don't like have to say idea. much. You don't have to say much. I like that idea. All right. Um, that was really good when it comes to research fees. Do you want to transition into, into agent markup and why these agents should not be afraid to charge agent markups? Because yeah, they're wholesalers, you know. 
the price yeah. they have the pricing so i like to explain to my travel agents every time i i, um, I, I do orientation i explain to them like this the travel industry is like a box of cheeses every single every single supplier has the same box 12 ounces box of cheeses dollar tree has it um walmart has it target has it uh all of the the high-end stores have it however everybody is willing to charge a different price for that same box and that means the price a, a different a, a different price and guess what when you compare it to the travel industry a different commission as well so you may log in one day and see a whole vacation same flight same everything five hundred dollars cheaper on this end than it is over here and then you go to come i guess compare pricing out there to you know the normal booking engines and guess what you're still you know five hundred dollars below why are you not marking your trip up even if it's just a little bit why why are you selling the trip at you know way 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 below market value you know when you can sell it right up there you know just below what everybody else is selling for and still win on 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 all sides you win the customer and you win you know your um increased commission as well what do you think about that well i think that plays a lot into people's comfort level but yes. also people's confidence within themselves when you know that you're showing up consistently for your clients, you know that you're going to give the best customer service, you're out here looking for the best rates, um, you're confident in what you present to your client. At the end of the day, there are vendors where they'll give us the, the tool, I guess you could say, to um, adjust our markup accordingly. So as an agency owner, um, Bezaline is a really good example for that. Bezo line says, hey, look, this is our net rates. Like what commission rate do you want to set for, you know, your agency? And I can say, hey, well, we want to attack on 10%. We want to attack on 15 or 20%, whatever it is. And that's the markup straight across the board. Yep. So if you're doing something, th the markup really just goes back to how much work and how often am I going to have to work on this booking? If you know that you have a family reunion, a girl's trip, um, some big trip or something where there's lots of people coming from different states or they want you know to stay three nights versus the full five nights, there's going to be questions, there's going to be emails, there's going to be text messages. And every time you answer a question, you need to be paid. Yep. That's really what the markup is for. It goes to justify all the touch points that you have to do for maintaining the customer service level to maintaining the trust of your client from the time that they book to the time that they return home. Like that. I mean, I can preach it to my, my, my face turns blue and it's not going to turn blue, but <laughs> how do you recommend agents get their confidence level up with, you know, feeling comfortable with charging these fees, uh, the research fees and the agent markup? Because I could tell them all day, you, small. Did, you know, start hmm? small. That, that's, the, that's the best advice I can say is start small. If you want to charge a agent markup, start off at $10. If you want to charge a research fee, start off at $50. Personally, I believe if someone doesn't have $50 today for me to do the research, they most likely can't afford the trip. Right. Uh, they want they want they want to call you back next week. That that goes into another question. How do you qualify your clients besides the well, if you're charging a research fee, you don't necessarily have to qualify your clients like as far as the clients that are going to, you know, waste your time. Uh, do you pre-qualify your clients before you even, you know, take the research fee or do you, you just do the, do the inquiry? Well, I do the inquiry and based off of how things are going from the conversation, because remember, I'm asking questions about personality, experience, you know, I, I blatantly ask, what are you expecting of me as your travel agent? And I ask that before I tell them what they should be expecting. Now, if they start saying things like, well, I expect you to price match every time the, the rate adjusts and all that <laughs> other stuff. Oh, thank you. It's been great talking to you. Um, but I'm looking at my current calendar and I may not be able to get to your quote until, you know, the end of the month. So. I love it. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, and that's fair. You don't have to say, I don't want to work with you. you, you right. I don't, that's not really professional. Right. But just to say like, hey, you know, I think that it's been really informative to sit here and talk to you today. Um, but right now, it seems like you're looking for an extensive amount of details. And in terms of what I have on my roster for quotes that have to come out, or I'm working on a few bigger trips right now, I'm, I'm not really able to work on this right now. Could we revisit this, you know, at the end of the week or at the end of the month? Or better yet, I have an agent for you that, you know, specializes in all inclusives or specializes in that particular cruise line. Um, would you mind me giving you a referral? Because somebody else that may not want to charge fees and they're okay doing all, all this extra stuff will gladly take them. That's fine. There's so many travel agents out here. To say, I don't know nobody, like nobody that will take them. No, unless they're just automatically, you know, poop, poop, or cocoa puffs off the top, then I won't refer them. I, I won't unleash them, <laughs> you know, on some fellow agent. But it's okay to give a referral. If you know that you have no interest in booking a carnival cruise, do it. I literally just did that today, not with Carnival. I had a lady call me about wanting to do a bus trip to Atlantic City for her and her girlfriends at the, what do you call the thing, the nursing home. I don't do bus trips. <laughs> so wait. I I, you know, I love it. I, I'm, you know, stay young, women. Stay young. I appreciate y'all trying to stay lively, but I'm not putting together a bus trip. That's not my wheelhouse. But guess what? I got an agent that likes Disney. I got an agent that likes Universal, and she loves a good bus trip. So what did I do? This sounds amazing. I actually have an agent that specializes in bus trips, and she sounds perfect to work with you. So I introduced her. I told her a little bit about my, my agent. I was texting my agent. I was like, look, girl, I got to leave for you, you know? And I told her about it. And before the end of the day, she was like, oh, well, I got them to sign my contract. They paid my fee. Um, and I got a bus trip for $300 per person. These women are going to Atlantic City, okay? <laughs> for $300 per person. <laughs> wow. So it's okay to, to, you know, refer. You just got to know your lane. Yep. And when, you, yep. when you're I not like comfortable, just start small. That is, that's the best advice. I like it. So when you're pre-qualifying your clients, like I'd like to ask the question, you know, um, when will they be ready to make their deposit to hold their trip? That's like in one of my questionnaires. Um, do you make sure that your clients are deposit ready or you just, you just do it? you know, they want to get pricing then? Well, I feel like if you're speaking to me, then you already know that the next step is a quote. And after that, the next step is payment. Right. So I keep using key words or key phrases throughout my qualifications. Again, that's a part of setting the expectation. Like, I will provide this quote in 24 hours. That is an expectation. I'll, you know, after that, you review the quote for a few days, you know, our quotes are only good or the pricing can only be held for 24 hours, 48 hours. I give them that expectation verbally, as well as, you know, on the bottom of my invoices so that they know. Now, if they don't move forward, that's fine. Because what? I charge the fee. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just up to them i mean it's their money people who are going to pay your fees are not going to take their time um to put that deposit down mainly because they just paid your fee they don't want two weeks to go by and have to make another payment for your fee true so they're going to move you want to stay booked and busy right <laughs> charge that fee <laughs> charge that fee absolutely I love this I love this I'm just trying to take up some other questions to ask um what else do you have to add about fees because um, I know my agents get tired of talking to me <laughs> <laughs> I got so many videos it's always good to hear some hear it from someone else's perspective I would say um 
grab an accountability partner. Yes. You know, two people who are not comfortable with fees, you guys can talk about it. Say, hey, you know, why are we going to charge this fee? What can the client expect from us? Literally write down a list. What are you doing when you provide a quote? I'm offering you a quote within 24 hours or whatever the time is. I'm giving you two to three options or a daily itinerary for something, you know, exotic. Um, I'm going to provide 24 hour emergency service. I'm going to, you know, double check your, your booking 30 days before departure to see if the price dropped for, you know, if you have the insurance that allows, you know, for the price matching. Um, if you're doing a group, I'm going to handle all of the booking, all of the payments and provide a report to you monthly to show that people are on track. Like you really got a line item, what it is that you're providing for your service. If you can get down five things that you're providing, those are five things that you're doing for free. Yep. So if I write down five things that I'm doing and I say, "Mm, how long does it take me? to come up with a daily itinerary for nine days through Bali. Oh man, that took me two days to come up with that. So you mean something you don't work for two days for free? <laughs> then when you start putting it on paper, you're gonna be like, man, I, I don't work the whole shift <laughs> you know, and got nothing for it. So if you're charging $10, let's say an hour, And the average person works eight hours a day and you took two days to come up with a a nine day itinerary, you just gave away $160. Yep. $160. Cause if you was working at McDonald's, they, they give him $14 an hour. Yeah. Yep. They give him $14 an hour. You only asking for 10 and you gave them two days of free labor. Yep. So would you recommend a new agent that's just starting out, like do their first 10 inquiries, you know, for no charges, not yet for for practice, not for that same client, but just in general, just to get the groove going and then eventually charge uh, research fees or do you recommend right off the bat charging? them? Personally, I think that you should charge off the bat, but if again, someone new has, who has never done a quote before, maybe they need to go through some role playing. Yes. Grab a friend, grab another agent that is going to be your accountability partner and say, hey, girl, look, I I really want to charge these fees, but I'm not really confident yet in how I'm delivering myself. Can you randomly throw me some things that you want me to quote? And let's see how that process goes. Because as you're role playing, you're going to say, okay, ooh, I need to send out an email reminder for this. Or, ooh, I want to make sure that I list this line item of what it is that they're getting out of their quote. This is how you start building out the expectations. Mm -hmm. So um, grab that accountability partner and role play. Even if it's just a phone call to say, hey, you know, pretend that you're Jane. I I love using Jane. Okay. Jane is my girl. (laughs) I I use Jane all the time. (laughs) Hey, Jane, look, I want to go to Bali for nine days. What you got for me? Okay. Start asking those qualifying questions that you would do during your interview. What are those qualifying questions? Have you written them down yet? You didn't? Okay, well, let's back it up and write down these questions. Maybe I thought of something that you didn't think of. Ooh, that's a good one. Let, let, me, let me write that down too. It's okay because this is how you're honing your niche. This is how you're honing your customer service level. And guess what? There's so many of us travel agents. There's so many people traveling. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's something that I am copying from my accountability partner, you and I are most likely not servicing the same clientele market. But you know what? Even if we were, it's an $8 trillion industry. It's enough travel money to go around for everybody. Literally. Absolutely. 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 So that's why, like, for me, I give my client, not my clients, my agents, the, um, the Kickstarter ebook, you know, Uh seven ways to say hello. I Uh give them my exact verbiage that I use because even though I'm talking to, you know, my clients, I have no idea who their clients are. I don't 
don't know the person at their job. I don't know the yep. person at their church. I don't know their sister, their cousin. But when you take my recipe and you make it your own, like your welcome letter, that's personal. That's about who you are as an individual. But I, I'm not you. I'm not you, Jane. <laughs> this is good. You're right. This is good. Do you have anything else for the agents? This was, this is good. Um, no, I think that really what I just want to do is just leave you with be encouraged, grab your accountability partner. It's okay to start small. Just know that there's an end goal for you to grow um, and justify what your fees are covering. But more importantly, ask yourself, do you want to work for free? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love this. I want to work for free. <laughs> Charge a fee. <laughs> and it rhymes. I love it. I love it. Okay. So this is, this is amazing. Uh, all I can say is thank you so much for, for your time, Sade. It's, it's good to hear from another agency owner <laughs> and, you know, it's good for my agents to hear from someone else because I can just preach it and preach it. And, and the same thing, and yeah. all it takes is one person to say something for it to, you know, for it to hit different. So yeah. just thank you for coming on and talking to the agents about research fees and, you know, not being afraid to charge research fees and agent markups because all of them are um, essential to not working for free, pretty much. And scaling your business. Yes. Yes. Yep. So I don't um, have any. Oh, I was going to say, do you have questions? I don't, I can't see the chat room. So does anyone have any questions? Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to check. I'm going to check the chat. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so nope, Facebook does not have any more questions. There are no questions in the chat. This was amazing. Thank you so much, Sade. Oh, <laughs> you're so welcome. And listen, we got to have you on another webinar, okay? I'll be ready. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Thanks, Abby.